Ramon Alagodi from Karnataka Theological College. See, the today's topic was similarity between Christianity and Islam. But what I understood was the differences between Christianity and Islam. I think that was the main emphasis. That's what I understood when he spoke about difference between Jesus and Muhammad. That Jesus came only for the Jews and Muhammad came for the people of all the world. I don't think that is true. That is not the teaching of the Bible. And uh, he said that Jesus is not God. And he took the convenient statement from the gospel that Jesus said that my father is greater than I. But what about the statement made by Jesus that I am the way, the truth and the life. My father and I are one. And those who have seen me have seen the father. See, there are statements and there, are, there is in the Bible clearly stated that Jesus is God. That, that is what we believe and that is what the whole world believes. And, 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 and my... You're most welcome, brother. You can ask as many questions as you want. It's my pleasure. <coughs> the brother asked a question. First, he said that the topic was similarity between Islam and Christianity. And I spoke more about differences and similarities. Brother, if you analyze, I was quoting the Bible, chapter number, verse number, chapter number, verse number. I'm quoting from the Bible. What I did that there are various similarities between Islam and Christianity. But I laid emphasis on those similarities which are mentioned in the Bible and Quran which the Christians don't follow. I was not speaking about whether the followers of Christian, whether those people who claim to be Christian, whether they are following a Bible or not. In that case, it may be a difference between Muslims and Christians. The topic is not similarity between Muslims and Christians. The topic is similarity between Islam and Christianity. There is a world of difference between Christian and Christianity and a world of a difference between Muslim and Islam. So brother, just to remind you, the topic is not similarity between Muslims and Christians. Similarity between Islam and Christianity. Christianity is based on the Bible. So I was talking about the similarities between Quran and the Bible. That Quran and Bible both say don't have pork, but Christians have, Muslims don't have. Quran and Bible both say don't have alcohol, Muslims don't have, the Christians have. Islam and Bible say you shouldn't be circumcised, Muslims are circumcised, you aren't circumcised. So I was talking about the similarities between Bible and the Quran. Bible and the Quran. Saying that Jesus says that you should worship one God, but till you all believe in Trinity. Jesus says don't worship me, yet you all worship him, etc, etc, etc. So again, if you see the cassette, it's available, brother. I never spoke on a single differences, quoting that Bible says this Quran is against that. No. I quoted the similar points. Similar points. When I quoted the argument, giving examples of Christian missionary who tried to prove their point that Deuteronomy 18.18 is a prophecy of Jesus, peace be upon him. In that argument, I quoted the differences between Moses and Jesus, peace be upon him. You understood, brother? But if you analyze, I was talking about the similarity between the Bible and Quran, which is the basis of Islam and Christianity. Now coming to the question, the brother said that I made a statement and I do agree with it and I stick to it, that there's not a single unequivocal statement. And the complete Bible, where Jesus, peace be upon him, himself says he's God, where he says, worship me. The brother made three statements that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and that life. No man comes in to be but my father. He that has seen me has seen my father and I and my father are one. He's made three statements without references. I'll give references of all three statements. The first two statements is from Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6 and 9. You can check it up. The Bible is here. I'm speaking from my memory. I'm speaking from the memory. It's from the Bible. You are a reverend or you are a uh, person in theological college. If I'm pulling a fast one, I've got the Bible. You know, people think that Zakir is just pulling verses, chapter number verses. The reference is there. The brother quoted a verse, I'm giving the reference. But brother, always you should check the context. You can't quote a verse out of context. Yeah, but you have to take speaking out of the context. I'll give you the context. You give the quotation, I'll give you the context, brother. From my memory, you can check it up if I'm telling a wrong thing. For context, go to verse number one. Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number one onwards. To 10, you'll get the context. Jesus, peace be upon him, says, In my father's house, there are various mansions. Many mansions are there. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And you know where I go with. So Thomas says, That we don't know where thou goest. We don't know the way where thou goest. So he says, I am the way, the truth, and that life. 
No man comes into my father but by me. And I agree with that statement. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was the way, the life, and the truth. No man came unto God Almighty but by Jesus, peace be upon him. During his time, every messenger during his time was the way and the truth to Almighty God. At the time of Moses, Moses, peace be upon him, was the way, the truth, and that life. No man came unto God Almighty, but to Moses, peace be upon him. At the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, he was the way, the truth, and that life. At the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was the way, the truth, and that life. So every prophet at his time, he was the way, the truth. And I agree with that statement. It meant that if you follow me, you are following Almighty God. He was the way. Again, if you see, it goes further, he says that, but we have not seen God. So then Jesus, peace be upon him, says that he that has seen me has seen the God. Means he that has seen me, means you follow my commandments, you are following the commandments of Almighty God. He that has seen me has seen God. If you see the context, the first statement gives the context that in my father's house are many mansions. He doesn't say in my house there are many mansions. Giving the context, he's talking about Almighty God. It clearly mentions, if you read the context, you'll come to know that in context he was referring that if you follow me, I am the way, the truth. If you follow my teachings, you are following teachings of Almighty God. Similarly, all the teachings of prophets, whatever you follow, if you follow their teachings, you are indirectly following the teachings of God, which I have got no objection in accepting these statements. Regarding the third statement which the brother made is, I and my father are one. It's a statement from Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 30. Brother, you can check it up. It's Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 30. I and my father are one. Now again, I will give you the context. After context, you tell me that yet do you believe that Jesus is be upon him is Almighty God or not. If you read the context, for context, go to verse number 23. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse 23. You go. It says that Jesus entered the temple in Solomon's porch. Jesus entered the temple in Solomon's porch. Verse number 24 says that all the Jews surrounded him. And they said, how long does thou make us doubt? If thou art the Christ, tell us plainly. I'm quoting verbatim from King James Version of the Bible. Verse number 25 says, I told you, but he believed not. The work that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. The work that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. Verse number 25. Verse number 26, I told you, but you believe not because they are not my sheep. Verse number 27 says that my sheep, they hear me. I know them and they follow me. Verse number 28, that... I give them eternal life, they shall not perish. No man can pluck them out of my hand. Verse number 29. My father which give it to me is greater than all. No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. Verse number 28 says, No man can pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29 says, No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. Verse number 30 says, I and my father are one. So if you read the context, verse 28 says, No one can pluck them out of my hand. The followers of Jesus, peace be upon him. No one can take them away from Jesus, peace be upon him. Verse number 29 says, no one can pluck them out of my father's hand. Verse number 30 says, I and my father are one. In context, you come to know, in purpose, Jesus and Almighty God, they were one. My father is a medical doctor, actually, and even I'm a medical doctor. If I say, I and my father are one, does it mean that we are one person? No. When I say, I and my father are one, it means my father is a doctor, I'm a doctor. In profession, we are medical doctors. It doesn't mean one as a person. In purpose. It's very clear. But still if you say, brother, no, this one means one other person, I say, okay. If you read further in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 21, it says that my father is thou in me and I in E. He tells the twelve disciples. The same one is used. We all are one. If you read further, Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 21, says, my father art in me and I art in you. In the disciples, he says, and, and the same, we all art are one. If you say one in purpose, you'll have to believe in 14 gods. Almighty God, Jesus Christ and 12 disciples. And if you go to the original manuscript, brother, the word used, one, out here, is the same. The one that is used in Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse number 30, which brother quoted, I and my father are one, is the same used in Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 21. Same one. My father is in me, I in you, we all are one. Verse 23 says that I am in you. We are one. Again, same one. Same word. In context means... Almighty God and Jesus Christ and the apostles, they taught the same truth, the same message. In giving the message, they were one. But if you say, no, they were actually one, then you should change Trinity into another concept, meaning 14 gods. God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the 12 disciples. See, you read the context, you get. But even if you don't agree with the context, 
If you don't agree that in context it doesn't mean one in purpose, then you also have to agree that the twelve disciples were also God. Then further you read verse number 31. Gospel of John chapter 10 verse 31 after Jesus says, I and my father are one. The Jews picked up stones to stone him. You know, they knew the Jews wanted to kill him because good riddance. Ah, see, the Christians say he claimed divinity because for redemption. Christians said he claimed divinity for redemption. Jews said he claimed divinity for good riddance. And okay, good, we want to kill him, so we want an excuse to kill him. What's number three to give the answer? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Many of good works have I shown you for my father. Which of the good works do you stone me for? Verse 32. You can check it up. Verse 32. Which of the good works do you stone me for? Then verse number 33 says, Jews answered, We don't stone you for good works. We stone you because ye being a man, you blaspheme it. You claim divinity. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, verse number 34, 35 says, or Gospel of John, chapter number 10, says that, Is it not mentioned in your scriptures that ye are gods? And to a person who the word of God has come, if you call that person God, the scripture is not broken. To a person to whom the word of God has come, if you call him God, the scripture is not broken. And if you have cross-reference of Psalms, chapter 82, verse number 6, it says, there that ye are gods. So if you read the context, brother, Jesus, peace be upon him, never claimed divinity. What he said in purpose, almighty God and himself in giving the message, they were the same. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother, if you have any... Any <coughs> points to give for you can give that. No, I think you are using the Bible according to your convenience. Because oh, okay. some, see, if I'm wrong, say, brother, see, somebody, brother, if I'm wrong, you're most welcome to correct somebody, me. Somebody asked about that question of salvation. And you, you gave that instant that, no, brother, that, we, that young we, brother. Brother, we'll come to that first. Yeah. Talk, talk about divinity. We'll come to salvation after I'm here. I will not go away. Because first, that, that was related to that. Yes, we'll come uh, to that also, brother. We'll yeah. come to Matthew chapter 19 afterwards. First, do you agree that Jesus, peace be upon here, did not claim divinity? If you say claim divinity, you have to believe in 14 gods. You say, I understand Bible wrong, I am open for correction. I am human beings, can't make a mistake, I can make a mistake. Here is the Bible, you tell me, Dr. Zakir Naik, you are understanding Bible wrong. It's not like that, it's like that, I am open for correction. But only by saying I am wrong, laying an allegation, Islam believes it should always be given with proof. I told you you are wrong, giving proof, quoting chapter number, verse number, giving the context. You have to prove me wrong, brother, your context was wrong because of X, Y, Z reasons. Here is the Bible, brother, you can read from the Bible and prove me wrong. I am ready, I am open for correction. Those don't just say me, oh, you're getting it wrong. See, when we say a person is wrong, if I say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, you're wrong. I have to give reasons why it is wrong. So, brother, I've given you my context. If you think my understanding of the Bible is wrong, you as being a theologian, you're a theologian, I agree. I'm not a theologian, I'm a student of theology only. You being a theologian, you have to tell me, brother Zakir, your context is wrong, it's not this, it's that. Show me, I'm giving you cross-references. Then we'll come to the next part of salvation, brother. So, do you have any argument for Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse number 30? No. no. You, 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 you okay, fine. You go to the next. Yeah, okay. I don't agree with your interpretation. So, what you don't agree? <laughs> I don't agree with your interpretation. Yeah. Okay, you have got no reason yeah. for not agree. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Next question, brother. See, the, the, the next question was that that, that person into who... The, went, into the mic, into the mic, brother. That person who went to Jesus and asked about eternal life, Jesus said, you keep the commandments. Is it not? Yes. That's where you stopped, right? But that story did not stop there. Yes, I'll continue if you want. And immediately that man said, I have, I have been keeping the law, I have been keep, keeping the commandments all this, my life. That's right. And Jesus said, then you sell all that you have and then you come and follow me. What does that mean? If you want to have eternal life, you sell all that you have and you follow me. That's right, I agree with that. The brother yeah, the you, that is where it ends, sir. But you stop halfway to prove your point. That's not right. And the brother has given the comment. Sell your wealth, Jesus everything. You, you lack one thing there. And that one thing is that you must give all...